Hey, welcome to Ken's Games Collection and the Games Room Tour for 2022. Okay, so here it is, my Games Room Tour. Uh, it's something that I've been really wanting to do over the course of 2021. It didn't happen because I wasn't really ready to present something that I was happy with. I was still working on that side of the games room, which you'll see, you don't see that much in videos, but also I was working on this side. I wanted to get this whole wall filled with bookcases and I'm at the stage now where I'm, I'm pretty much happy with how things are looking. So I really wanna show what this what's in this collection. This is a single bedroom. It's just a standard size single bedroom here in Australia. So I don't have a lot to work with. I could probably take this downstairs into the garage, but then the, the car's outside and I don't want to do that. So I've this is what I got to work with. And it's taken me a long time to try and figure out how I wanted this thing to look. Because mainly because I do my filming in here as well. So it feels more like a recording studio not uh, actual games room and i do have stuff downstairs that uh, i've got a sony bravia tv at the playstation 5 switch and xbox series s i think it is not x yeah i've got that one downstairs where i do most of my gaming but up here is where i film and all the other stuff is up here especially the retro stuff um, let's just get in and have a look and see what i have in this collection Okay, so let's start off with this bookcase. I didn't know until I started going through this collection, cataloging it in alphabetical order, that I had a full bookcase full of PlayStation games. Up top, we have the PlayStation 5, which at the moment isn't that many games, but I'm really happy with how I'm progressing. Next to that, because there's so much empty space, I got this Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening uh, pack from Ian from Budget Gaming. He sent me this, I think it was back in the end of 2020 uh, he he knows I'm such a, a massive fan of Zelda that he was so kind to send me that and end of 2021 for Christmas I sent him something in return so that was something that wasn't wasn't released here in Australia so it was really great to be able to have something that a lot of people here didn't have now I have 176 PlayStation 4 games in this collection and I like I said when I was going through cataloging it I did not know I had this many PlayStation 4 games and it would end up being my biggest collection of games at one stage the PlayStation Vita was I was up to about 110 games and that was the most I had so with the uh, PlayStation 3 games I continued on from the PlayStation 4 I didn't want to have any gaps so I just thought with the PlayStation 4 game ends, we'll start off with the PlayStation 3. And as I get more games in this collection, I'm gonna just have to move things around. It's just the way it's gonna have to be. And below that is the PlayStation 2 stuff. PlayStation 2, everything there has been rebuilt. I had that back in the day, sold it to get the PlayStation 3, regretted it so much. And it's taken me such a long time to rebuild the PlayStation 2 collection. And I did pick up a lot of stuff years ago in Singapore for an amazing price. There's a lot of PAL stuff in there. There's a lot of NTSC stuff in there, but it's just so great to be able to build this collection back up from scratch. And the same with the PlayStation 3, I, I, I had to rebuild the majority of that as well. So it's just incredible how we go through these phases where we sell off stuff and we wanna get it back. And uh, my greatest tip I can tell anybody that is looking at selling off their collection to buy a PS5, don't do it hang on to those systems because it will come back to to haunt you to eat away at you it really will okay so i've been a massive fan of tomb raider all the way back to the original one all those years ago at the 25th anniversary in 2021 and we didn't get much from square enix which was a real shame but one thing that we did get that i only discovered recently was square enix had something going on the website for the 25th anniversary of tomb raider and i believe that there was a competition with artists to come up with their own art for uh, game covers for the entire tomb raider series going right back to tomb raider featuring lara croft right up to uh, shadows of the tomb raider um, these were downloadable uh, you could print them out and put them into your game cases alternate covers 
I took this one step further because it was all in high res uh, graphics. So pretty much I printed these things out at Kmart on like an A4 size paper. I went to Daiso, which is like a Japanese uh, store here in Australia. You get them all over the world, I think, and bought these frames for like uh, $3.10 each. And I was able to blue tack these things on the wall. And I think it looks really incredible. And here is my little Tomb Raider shrine, I guess you could say. I got a lot of pop vinyls, takakis. I have the rock candy, which is really incredible, along with the Pixel Pals and also with Lara Croft and the Temple of Oris, there was a really cute little uh, Lara Croft figurine as well. And at the back there in the swimsuit, I actually won that so many years ago. It was such an incredible thing to be able to win. And I do have the original Tomb Raider games on both the Sega Saturn and also the, the original PlayStation. And that's from back in the day when I first bought those games. So I really am happy with what I have here for this sort of stuff, especially with the artwork. The artwork is so incredible. Now this Billy bookcase is the newest addition to the games room. I decided not to go with a full size one, but the half size one, so I could put something in the middle. That's why the Tomb Raider stuff is up there. So I've got something on display. Otherwise I, I feel it would look too, I don't know, it just wouldn't look right having everything all the same size, full size Billy bookcases. But this half bookcase is full with Nintendo stuff. First two shelves is Nintendo Switch stuff. I'm already could actually start on a third row. So things are gonna have to move along uh, for that to happen. Then we have the Wii U stuff. I got back in Nintendo via the Wii U and I really enjoyed the system. I thought there was some great games on it. There was no real uh, third party support other than Ubisoft with a couple of games. But I really enjoyed the stuff that Nintendo was pushing out for that system. It wasn't a success like the Wii was or even uh, the Super Nintendo, the DS, all that sort of stuff. It was a failure but I think it was the prototype to what we would now know as Nintendo Switch. One thing with these bookcases is I can't move the middle shelves. They are on there, you can't move them at all. Uh, so I do have a little bit of space there. I didn't know what to put in there so I put some collector's editions in there and also the original Xbox. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there but right now I really don't have any other place to put it. So I'm pretty happy just to have that sitting there right now. Now down the bottom shelf we have the rest of the Wii U stuff. And I did start collecting for the Wii because the Wii U is backward compatible. So I thought, okay, let's get a couple of games. I did enjoy it. I did discover the Paper Mario games via the Wii. So I really enjoyed that Paper Mario game. I do have some controllers there. I have the Pokeball, I have the Super Mario controller for kids, my daughter. She hasn't used that one yet. She's somehow managing with the, the bigger controllers. And also I have Skyward Sword there as well. Okay, so with these Billy bookcases, they come in different shapes and sizes. I have the half case there. I have this little one here and I was thinking, how can I utilize this? I wanted to have this here to break up those big bookcases and even with that one. Okay, so up top I do have some GameCube games. I started collecting that back in 2020. I don't have that many, but the ones I have are really great. I do have Yoshi on the N64 and the Super Famicom and I just have some other stuff up there filling it in. So down here, I didn't know what to do with this. So I thought, okay, I'll put some of my Disney Infinities in there. So I don't know how long they're gonna stay there. And this bookcase here, I do have, these are Repro Super Nintendo games and that's actually Fantasy Star laying down there. I don't know why it's laying down there. I got no other place to put it. And this is my Sega Master System as of 2022. Just think that the only two games I kept for it was Fantasy Star and Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. So we built everything else for this collection. There's still a lot of stuff that I wanna try and get back in this collection. It's just gonna come down to prices because these things now are so expensive. Especially the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Uh, Sonic Chaos is going for about $100. Sonic Spinball is well over $200 here in Australia. And um, other games like Streets of Rage is about $150 while I've seen Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Master System selling for upwards of $500 asking price, which is just 
shows you just how crazy things are getting with the retro gaming market at the moment. And this is where it all began for me with Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. Uh, I, I have to thank to this day my best mate for introducing me to the Sega Master System and this game. And um, when I saw it running, I knew I just had to have it because we're such massive fans of Wonder Boy in the arcade and just to think that they had produced something even more incredible than the first two Wonder Boy games. This was a full-on action-adventure game, uh, Metroidvania style of gameplay. You had to backtrack as you turned into different characters, so it was an incredible game and the main reason why I got into gaming. Now I don't have many Sega Mega Drive games in the collection and that's something I like to rebuild. I do have all the Japanese Mega Drive games because that's how I first discovered the Mega Drive back in the day at a Grey Import store before it was even released here in Australia. So I really enjoy the artwork on the Japanese Mega Drive games, Bare Knuckles which is known as Streets of Rage, Quackshot, would have to be two of my favourite uh, pieces of art on the Mega Drive. It's such an incredible system. And the last two shelves down here is full of PlayStation Portable games. This is another collection that I rebuilt from scratch. I have a lot of games in this collection that are still new and sealed. I picked up for bargains over the course of about four or five years. And I'm sure some of these games I could sell for $200 a piece. Uh, I don't know if I would ever do that, but it's always an option if I ever wanted to. But the PSP was an incredible system from Sony. They really took on Nintendo, I feel. And there's so many other games I really want to get in this collection. It's just getting really difficult to try and find PlayStation Portable games at a decent price now because those things are just going up so much. Okay, so finishing off this wall of games, we have the Xbox 360, Xbox One, and probably one of my prize collections, I guess you could say, is the PlayStation Vita. I was lucky I collected this stuff when it was still relatively unknown. It didn't really take off like the PlayStation Portable did, but I absolutely love this system, especially with Uncharted Gold and Abyss. And that was the main reason why I got a PlayStation Vita, just because I was a massive fan of Uncharted and I really wanted to play that game and the incredible work that Bench Studio did. It was unreal for a handheld system to be able to handle a full-on adventure game like that. It was just incredible and so many great games was released on the PlayStation Vita. It's only now after all these years that it's getting the recognition it deserves by a lot of collectors and the prices for that system is just getting astronomical. It's crazy. Below the uh, PlayStation Vita stuff we have the original Xbox. Now this was another collection that I rebuilt from scratch. I really wanted to get Jet Set Radio Future back and I really hope one day we will see a remaster of that incredible game but I look at the original Xbox as being the Dreamcast 2. It was an incredible system with lots and lots of uh, games and for Microsoft to take the chance to get into the gaming market uh, you know at that stage we had PlayStation, we had Sega was still in the market and we had Nintendo so yeah especially with Nintendo and Sega they were the, the heavy hitters and all of a sudden Sony comes along and pretty much dominates the market so Xbox thought they could get in some into that as well they have they didn't crack the Japanese market unfortunately but they gave it a good crack with a lot of Japanese RPGs especially on the Xbox 360 it was really great so once I got into Nintendo via the Wii U, I started showing some interest in the Nintendo 3DS games. I got the original 3DS. That was the one where you had to keep your head pretty much steady all the time to get that full effect of 3D. I would later get the uh, new Nintendo 3DS which tracked your eyes a lot better which made it so much easier to view these games in 3D. So I have a shelf that's not even a quarter full yet. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing with this one. I thought that I may rebuild the Sega Dreamcast collection. Again, prices of Dreamcast games are ridiculously high and um, I'm still deciding what I'm going to do. I do have some original PlayStation games there. I don't have much. Um, back in the day I had an amazing collection. I'm still not sure if I want to try and recollect for it. I think games are still going cheap. If I was, I may try to get 20 of my all-time favorite PlayStation games. 
Now at the bottom of the shelf, I have collector's editions. I, I don't know how I feel about getting the big box collector's editions with statues anymore. I'm kind of over it. I do like the stuff with art books. That may be something that I'm going to do in the future, but that's at the moment, I just got my collector's editions down there. Okay, so here is the TV that I've owned for maybe about 12 years, could be even longer than that. It's a Panasonic Plasma TV I picked up for about $1,500. It's still going strong to this day, whereas opposed a few years ago, we had a Samsung that pretty much crapped itself in two years. So this thing is built to last. And I have a lot of consoles on here, a lot of retro stuff going back from the Master System to the Mega Drive Mini to the NES and the Super NES and the uh, PlayStation Mini. Now these mini consoles is a great idea for a lot of modern gamers to experience all these old games we used to enjoy back in the day and with prices the way they are, it's a great alternative to trying to hunt down a game that's going to sell for three, four hundred dollars. Underneath there we have the Xbox 360, the Master System Mark II, we have the original Super Nintendo, the GameCube, and my good friend from Greece, George Kudravanak, sent me a Sega Dreamcast. And to this day, I thank you so much, my friend. That was an incredible gift that you sent me. The Dreamcast is my favorite console of all time. It's just something that was way ahead of itself, I feel. So many great games on it. I, I, to this day, I still wish I didn't sell it. We also have this little sackboy which holds the controller, but I thought it'd be really cool to put the headset on them as well. We have the prototype to what would become the Nintendo Switch. It's the Wii U, but hey, to me it was the prototype for the Nintendo Switch. And underneath that we have the Xbox One. A lot of stuff on here and I really wanted to try and fit the original Xbox in there, but it's just impossible. Okay, so I have this glass display which I really had to struggle where I wanted to put this in the games room, but I did find a spot right next to my workstation. Uh, I have a little thing here for Nights in the Dreams, one of my favorite Sega Saturn games, and that is the original Nights in the Dreams when I bought it back in the day. I have the Japanese version as well. We have the, uh, the Sega Christmas Nights in the Dreams, which was a really cool little giveaway. I love that statue, it's so cool. Now down the next one, we have Legend of Zelda. The next three shelves, oh, Legend of Zelda. A lot of different things in here. I have pop finals, I have amiibos, games in the back there. Uh, the Game Boy Advance was given to me by George uh, Kujo Van Ark. I have lots of different stuff in here. I really enjoyed this collection. We have a lot of Breath of the Wild. Now, while I'm not a fan, I'm not a huge fan of the game, I really enjoy the amiibos. Uh, the statue there of Link looks so cool. Uh, the Master Sword uh, collector's edition for the uh, collector's edition for Link's Awakening is so cool. Now, before we finish this games room tour, I need to talk about some of the artwork. Again, I downloaded the high definition uh, files and printed them out. I thought they looked really cool. This Legacy of Khan Soul Reaver, one of my favorite games. It's my favorite piece of art, along with Shadows of the Tomb Raider. I really enjoyed that one, and another one on the other side of the room, which I'll show a little bit later. This Nathan Drake Uncharted 4 is so cool. Then on this side I have Kino Bridge of Spirits. One of my favorite games from this current generation, Jet Set Radio. That is just an incredible piece of artwork. Okay, so I have my workstation here. Above it I have some more artwork, Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. I also have Bare Knuckle, the Japanese version of Streets of Rage. I love that artwork. And also anime art of Breath of the Wild, which looks really cool. So on top of the workstation, I have Book for Games. That's for the Super Nintendo cartridges to hold in. I thought that was really cool. I have the Scott Pilgrim Ramona Flowers figurine, which is just sitting there gathering dust. I have manga books of Legend of Zelda. Some of the Star Wars stuff. I have some other statues, Link as well. So that's pretty much it. That's my games room tour for 2022. The real highlight for me, putting this thing together, was getting the artwork for this games room it really popped before that these walls were empty apart from the, the shelving and i really feel that the artwork really makes this thing stand out even more and it is artwork based on my favorite games of all time starting off with monkey island fantasy star going through the tomb raider series soul reaver 
the newest one is Kina Bridget Spirits. That's an amazing game, but each piece of artwork in here represents games that really meant a lot to me. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this games room tour. This is probably the last one I'll do, not unless there's a major revamp of this room, but I don't see it happening. I'm pretty content with how I got this games room set up. It's taken me a long time, but I'm really happy with it. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I really hope you enjoy this video. And see you next time, guys. Bye.